so let's talk about the obvious way, and hopefully this is the way you're doing it for the coursework. If it's not, you should be doing it this way. Um, so um, let's say that I have already built a part of my index, right? So I've seen documents one through four. These are the documents, and this is the inverted index that I built. And this is just a regular index, not positional. Uh, you're just storing frequencies, right? So the word he occurs in every one of the documents, and the word pink only occurs in document four, uh, and it occurs uh, once in document four, right? So a new document comes in, document five, and what I want to do is I want to update my index with the contents of that document. So the simplest way to do that is uh, right there. So uh, you take this new document that has arrived, you break it up into words, and basically into word frequency pairs, because it's a regular index, You're not, you don't care about positions at this point. And, the way you would, uh, and what you would do next is for each word in the document, for each word frequency pair, uh, you get an inverted list of the document, fetch it from whatever structure you have. Uh, you append uh, the document and the frequency tuple to that list, and then you write that list back to disk or put it into wherever you're storing it uh, in, in, in memory. So, um, right, so, so, so what would happen here is in document five, uh, the word he occurs once, so you would write the tuple 5 1 uh, one time in document 5, and you would append it to the list of, to the end of inverted list for document 1. And sometimes you would actually have to create new inverted list, right? So um, uh, it has the word likes, which didn't occur in documents 1 through 4, so I need to create a new entry for it. So I create a new inverted list and just store the tuple in there. So this is the straightforward way, and this is what I'm expecting you to do for the second uh, coursework. But what is the problem with, with this? Why, why, why can't Google do something like this? Or if, if, if you were trying to build something on the scale of Google, why won't this scale? What, what is the problem with this algorithm? Extends infinitely. Extends infinitely. Well, um, that's just the property of language. I mean, any index is going to extend infinitely. You, you can't parallelize. You can't parallelize. Well, you're getting ahead, but uh, I mean, what if you didn't want to parallelize? So there's a huge problem with this, and the problem is, think about what I'm doing. This this get operation and the store operation. So there are two possibilities, right? Either everything is sitting in memory, in which case this, there's no problem with this algorithm, except you are assuming that you have enough memory to store the entire index. Okay? And the index is not a list of documents. Like we're not talking about the cost that we have for term at a time, where you have one float for each document that you have in the collection. No, you're talking about much more. You're talking about a tuple for each post. So if you have 20 billion documents and each of them has a thousand tuples and each tuple is eight bytes, what are you looking for memory-wise? Ah, uh, not gonna work. So this cannot fit in memory. Now suppose you're clever and you are actually storing them on disk, right? If you're storing them on disk, think about what you're doing. For each word that comes in, you are fetching an inverted list from disk, appending something to it, and what are you appending? You're appending a single cell, you're appending a single entry. And then you're writing it back to disk. Right? That is really, really wasteful. You're reading a bunch of stuff from disk, you're appending one number to it, and you're dumping it back to disk. So uh, this is very, very, very inefficient. Uh, if your data set is small enough to where you can fit it in memory, in memory, great. But if you have a realistic data set, then uh, this won't work. You can't do that. So, so what can you do? Um, and uh, the solution is index merging. So what you do instead of that is you don't try to keep one huge index and update it incrementally every time a new document falls from the crawler. Uh, what you do instead is you index documents in batches. You take a batch 
and the batch should be small enough to where you can actually do stuff in memory, right? Um, easy enough to do that, right? A million documents you can easily do in memory. Uh, it's 10 billion you can't do in memory. So you take a batch, you construct a partial index from that, right? And then another batch of document, documents comes in, and you build another index from that. So now you have two separate indices. This is the index that was built from documents one to three, and this is the index that's built from documents four and five. Right? So they are stored in the same exact way. So all I did, it's the same thing as on the previous slide, I just unrolled it into one long sequence of tuples. Right? So the word he and the tuples where it occurs are followed by the word ink and the tuples where it occurs and, and so on. Right. So uh, all of this is basically one big sorted list of items. And I'm assuming that this was small enough so that I could have computed it in memory. And this is small enough by itself. Uh, but of course, once you do it many, many times, you will end up with many small indices. And many small indices isn't great for uh, retrieval. You need to combine them. So how do you combine them? Uh, and for combining them, you use our friend, linear merge. The same thing that you used for uh, executing the queries, you can use for merging the indices. Why? Because these indices are basically lists that are sorted. Right? They're first sorted by term ID, by the word. That's, that's your major key. And then your minor key is the document number, right? And then the, uh, the tertiary key would be the position, if we were storing positions. But this time we're not storing positions, we're just storing uh, frequencies. Right? So the list is sorted first by term and then by document, and you have tuples. So all you need to do is you just need to merge those lists. And we know that that is an operation that can be done efficiently without random access, right? We have two sorted lists. All we need to do is we need to pre-cache a certain amount of one list, pre-cache a certain amount of the second list, merge them, and then fetch more from each one of the lists. Right? So uh, what it would basically be, uh, so I pre-cache a certain amount from both lists. I look at which one is smaller. So the list on the left is smaller at the moment because it's documents one, two, three, and this is documents four and five. So I would emit all of these tuples fetch the next batch from the file on disk, uh, then compare, now I need to start emitting these tuples because he is smaller than uh, ink in my ordering, so I emit the he tuples. Now I have the ink, I emit the ink, uh, thing versus ink, I'm gonna emit the ink, and, and this is the result, I'm just writing them uh, into a single file. Now I have a new term, the term likes, which didn't occur in the old index, and that is smaller than thing, which is the next entry on the left, so I would emit the likes and so on. So you just can uh, continue this way. Right. So it should be evident to you that in this way, uh, you can merge arbitrarily large indices together, and all you need to store in memory at a time is just this window. And this window, of course, you can make it arbitrarily uh, small. Uh, and uh, if the lists are stored uh, sequentially, then you're not alternating too much between them. Right? This window serves as a buffer uh, in a way, so you're not doing too much, uh, too much in terms of random, uh, random I/O. <clears throat> okay, so uh, that is the way in which you combine partial indices. So this allows you to build partial indices in memory and then combine them into one major index without uh, without too much cost. Okay. So um, now the next thing you'll notice is as you're doing these, these indices that I built, the partial indices, they're based from completely different sets of documents. So this was documents one, two, three. This is documents four and five. This means that they are completely independent of each other. When I was building each index, I don't actually have to know anything about the other index. Right? And whenever you, have a, uh, whenever you have a problem like that, whenever you have um, uh, bits of data and, and the algorithms that are processing these two bits, they don't need to know about each other. Uh, this is a great opportunity to parallelize uh, your work.